Okay, um, I'm Patricia, I'm a grad student in Andy McCammon's lab here in San Diego, and I'm going to be talking about um, channeling by proximity, the catalytic advantages of active site co-localization. So, um, obviously we all know enzymes are important in biological reactions, and a lot of times uh, these are diffusion-limited reactions. So, in this project, I use Brandon Dynamics to study um, substrate interactions. And so, a lot of previous work has been done um, in enzymes where there are multiple active sites, and there's usually either a physical channel or an electrostatic type tunnel. Um, however, in my project, I was more interested in looking at um, a pathway where there are multiple enzymes that aren't connected. So my goal was to use Brandon Dynamics to study uh, how effective intermediate transfer was between enzymes. However, I used a simple spherical model to represent the enzymes and the substrates um, because I wanted to look at just a pathway in general. And I also wanted to emulate um, some of the classical Brownian dynamic simulation papers where they just use simple spherical models. So I used uh, Gary's brown dye software to do the computations uh, for my project. Um, so for brown dye, you just need the structures of your uh, two molecules of your target and your substrate, and then the electrostatic grids, which I generated using APBS. And then um, in brown dye, you have to define the reaction criteria. So what uh, atom pairs constitutes a reaction, how many contacts you need, and how far apart they need to be for a reaction. Um, as Gary described earlier, you have your uh, substrate at a start site, and then if it uh, goes in the wrong direction and leaves, it either escapes or you restart. And then uh, if it goes and hits your, your target, then you have a reaction. And of course, I performed many simulations in order to get a good statistical sampling, and I used the single trajectory method. So, um, as I said, I use spheres to represent the enzymes and the substrates. Um, so, the substrate, which in the picture is a small orange sphere, starts at the start site and diffuses to the first enzyme to react, and then after that reaction started from that point and diffused to the second enzyme sphere to react. Um, the light colored circles are the active zones or active site patches where the substrate had to react. So it had to hit that uh, location in order to be considered a successful reaction. And then the reactions with the first enzyme and the second enzymes were recorded separately. Um, so the sizes I used are very unrealistic, but again, I was trying to emulate some of the earlier papers where they just used uh, size ratios as opposed to realistic sizes. So the substrate sphere, sphere was just a one angstrom radius and was given a negative one charge. And then the large enzyme spheres I either modeled as being four angstroms or eight angstroms. So I had a one to four or one to eight uh, size ratio. Um, the active zone patches were modeled as spheres with a five angstrom radius, and those were centered at the surface of the enzyme spheres. And then um, a positive one charge was located either at the active zone or in the center of the sphere. So either the charge was localized where the reaction needed to be take place or was just um, placed in general in the, um, in the sphere because brown dye needs the charges for the reaction, so that's why everything was charged. Um, so um, the two enzymes were considered one molecule, so they were held fixed relative to each other during the simulations. And so um, I varied the distance between them, between five and 50 angstroms in five angstrom intervals. And then I also um, changed the orientation of the active zones um, according to the picture seen there, so I rotated them by 45 degrees between a zero degree and 100 degree orientation. So um, some other parameters I used, um, I, start, I had the start distance at 50 angstroms and then I used 10,000 trajectories for each, um, each setup. Um, so for the first reaction, um, I calculated just the probabilities and um, from the first reaction, uh, we would expect that all of the orientations to be about the same because it should only depend on uh, how easily the um, substrate diffuses to the first location. 
And depending on the size and where the charges were located, I noted slightly different averages. So the smaller spheres and the charge localized in the active sites gave uh, better probabilities. So if I look at the graph, um, you'll notice that it's about the same for all of the orientations, except that when they're at the very closest distance, the probability dropped off sharply. So um, I think that perhaps because they were so close together, it might have prevented the substrate from getting in uh, to the active site. And so um, this uh, will eventually have uh, implications for the overall reaction, as I'll show you in a bit. Um, depending, the orientation didn't matter very much for the first reaction, it, it, because uh, it just, you know, it didn't really uh, matter where it was located because it was just getting in there for the first reaction. Um, so uh, some things I noted were that the smaller spheres were more likely to have the initial reactions and then the charge localization um, also gave higher probabilities for the initial reactions. And then again, when they're closer together, um, the initial reaction is uh, lower. And then I also noticed this in um, when the the spheres were oriented at the zero degree and 45 degree. When they're close together, uh, the effect was seen in both of those, but it was stronger when they're at the zero degree orientation. So for the second reaction, we would expect that the size, the orientation, and the distance are all going to have important effects on this reaction because um, it's starting from the first enzyme before going to the second. So. Um, I looked at the probability two ways. I looked at it uh, given that the first reaction occurred, which would show how efficient the transfer of the um, substrate would be. And then I also looked at it, uh, the probability of the overall reaction. So that's how good the overall pathway is going to be. So first uh, looking at, at um, the probability given that the first one occurred, um, if the orientation is held fixed, um, then the charge localization seems to be the key factor in increasing reaction probability. However, once you go out to the further distances, this doesn't look to be as important. So when I plotted it out, um, the green and blue lines, those are the ones where the charges are localized in the active site. And so um, at the closer distances, those had a higher probability. And the probabilities, um, I don't know how well you can read the numbers on the side, but we were seeing probabilities up around 80, 90 percent of transfer um, when they were close together, and then obviously it dropped off as they moved further apart. Um, so then when I held the distance fixed and I looked at the orientation, um, the size also seems to play a large role. Um, so again, the most effective transfers are when the uh, active sites are facing each other directly and then um, again because uh, as I noted in the first reaction, it might be that it's preventing the substrate from escaping. So again, um, the blue and green lines are with the charges uh, localized and they again give higher probabilities um, at the closer, at the um, orientations where they're facing each other. And then as you go further out, then the size seems to be uh, more important. So um, for the overall reactions, uh, the zero degree orientation uh, gave the highest reaction probabilities. Um, but then uh, for larger spheres, the shielding effects at the closer distances hindered the overall probability of the reaction. So. Um, on the graph, you can see that um, at the five angstrom distance, the close distance, um, for the larger sized spheres, the green and purple lines, the um, overall reaction probability drops off because of that first reaction not uh, being able to occur as easily. And then uh, once you move out then uh, to further distances, then uh, the charge effects take over and then as you move even further away, then um, the size effects. And then um, again with the orientation, the closest, uh, the orientation where they're facing each other uh, gave the uh, best probabilities and then as they rotate away, the probability of transfer um, decreases. 
So, um, as we'd expect, the orientation, distance, and relative sizes of these active zones uh, determines the success of the reactions, and then the charge localization uh, was important for increasing the probability. Um, however, when the active zones are too close together, um, it can hinder the initial reaction, which can strongly affect the probability of the overall transfer. And then, uh, I, again, as we separate the enzymes by large distance, the, um, the transfer is much less. So um, overall, uh, I thought that this might argue for perhaps a mechanism where the enzymes might move or rotate in order to control and optimize the efficiency of substrate, substrate um, uptake and then uh, subsequent transfer. So um, obviously this wasn't a very realistic model, so we would want to try something with you know larger spheres, different substrates. Um, or more realistic model using real proteins. Um, and then there has been some discussion of using this to look at the effect of multimers or looking at uh, possible crowding effects. So I'd just like to thank uh, Andy McCammon and the group members who helped me, uh, Gary for his help um, and help with brown dye, and then we collaborated with uh, Tom Lay who is at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and then funding resources, and then uh, this was published in the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters. So if you have uh, more interest, you can look at the paper. So thank you. Any questions? Question? First on San Diego side. What were the units for the, the divide length? Hmm? What were the units for the divide length? Do you have three points something? Is it yeah. extra? I think so. I think that's okay. the units that Brown Dye uses. Yeah, yeah, extra. So yeah. you're assuming about like a one molar concentration for the. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions in San Diego? Okay, questions over there? Did you look at natural systems where you have this couple of options, how they are orientated and what are the distances where the knowledge is known? Um, no, I didn't really uh, look at specific systems. I just kind of um, set this up really generally. But, I mean, in the future I could look at more specific systems where the, you know, where there is something that's more known and set it up that way. Yeah, question? So, so, thank you again.